confirmed through dental records that the remains were found on Wednesday are those of Brian Walker. Now, they're, re they're describing his remains as skeletal. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know if they were completely skeletal or partly skeletal? What, like, do we have any more information on the condition of his body? No, not really. Uh, keep in mind that it was exposed to the elements out there for quite a long time. Uh, that the, the, in fact, the whole scene was underwater for a period. That's how the FBI says that it wasn't able to locate those things before. Uh, the, the remains and the backpack and the notebooks, these things that... Uh, that uh, the the so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, they, they haven't been specific about uh, the kinds of remains that were discovered out there, but there, there's enough there that they were able to confirm that this was Brian Walker. Trash and control. Where his remains were found. Is it the Mayaka Hatchie? Is that how yep. it's pronounced? Uh, environmental like park. Hatchie. Yeah, it's right there. Uh, it's a part of that call from the Reserve. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, which is close to the North Fork North Fork uh, where the parents live. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's all kind of contained in that same wilderness area. And they couldn't search it earlier because it was underwater. Correct. Yeah. The, the whole area is subject to flooding. You know, there's always, uh, it's a very low-lying, swampy area anyway. So it doesn't take much to, for, for a lot of the area to go underwater. It was closed off to the public for several weeks, probably because of the flood, but also to give law enforcers exclusive access to it so they could continue the investigation. They really didn't find anything there at all that pointed toward Brian Laundrie's whereabouts until Brian Laundrie's parents showed up on Wednesday. So. I think there there are raised eyebrows around the country about you know how how did this happen just when they showed up, uh, but the, the attorney for Laundry's parents says uh, that these accusations or insinuations aren't accurate, that they're not fair, and that they're only upsetting uh, just the parents of a young man who now has been found dead. And they didn't just find his bones, right? They found some stuff that belonged to him. Yeah, including a notebook, and this is really interesting, Wayne. And it's, the FBI has custody of that notebook. Yeah, they have all kinds of expertise in treating paper and being able to reconstruct what was written there, even if it had been outside for some time, and that's what they're working on now, to try to see what is in that notebook. Is it a confession, an apology, a denial, even? An explanation? We don't know. Let's, uh, let's hope that the FBI is able to glean something from that notebook. I feel like that would be amazing if they can, because if they found the notebook near to his uh, remains, and if that was an area that had been underwater for a time, you know, a notebook is paper, so imagine putting, writing in a notebook and submerging it in water for days, what would be left of it? But you're saying the FBI says they think they may be able to restore it. Right. Wow. Well, there was also something Wayne called a dry bag, which was found out there. It's, uh, oh. Yeah, it's some sort of, I think, cutters outdoors and use these things. It's a bag that uh, has a Ziploc on it and keeps things dry. And the, the notebook may have been inside that, okay. but I think you're right. Yeah, if it, if it had been out there in the rain or underwater, I think it would be kind of mushed by this point. That would be, that would be more understandable, although it would then uh, deny the FBI the ability to be amazing, because you would say, oh my gosh, what kind of technology did you use to restore this notebook that had been, you know, out in the swampy area, and they go, oh, yeah, we opened up the dry bag and took it out. So that's not, a, that's not quite as amazing. Um, is there still uh, buzzing gossip, whatever, like about the parents and they, that it's so strange that they seem to know exactly where to go? Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm hearing a lot of that today. Uh, the FBI is being vocal about that, of course, and they're continuing with their investigation. They uh, give the couple the benefit of the doubt in terms of that the area had been flooded before then and that the, the couple coming out and taking a look around and finding this within four to five minutes or so. Mm -hmm. the, the, they, 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 the investigators don't seem to find that too unusual, at least not publicly. So could there be charges, maybe, uh, down the road? Potentially, I mean, if there was obstruction of justice or withholding or tampering with uh, some of the evidence out there, there could be charges down the road for the parents. Uh, for now, uh, all we have is the, the dead uh, Gabby Petito and now her dead fiance, Brian, uh, uh, Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry. So yeah, that's it. And, and we're all uh, much sadder about one of them than the other.
I'm not speaking for you, Jim. I understand you're independent. Uh, thank you. So good to talk to you. And thank you very much. Thank you, Quincy. All right, there he goes, Jim Ryan, ABC right. News correspondent. Let's get a news update from Jennifer Jones Lake. Then, let's give you a chance to win a thousand dollars, and then we're going to talk to ABC News entertainment correspondent, my buddy Jason Nathanson, about this really freak accident uh, on the set of a movie, Alex Baldwin fires a prop gun, and uh, one woman is dead, and the director severely injured. All of that's coming up. It's KFI AM640, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Well, the Port of Oakland could be a solution to supply chain issues and port congestion. Officials with the Port of Oakland say cargo ships at SoCal Ports can reroute to their facilities. Winemakers in Sonoma County and Napa Valleys are facing a wine bottle shortage. Many say they've got plenty of wine but are running low on bottles because bottle vendors claim their products are stuck on shipping containers. And the home in L.A. featured in the Halloween classic and Nightmare on Elm Street is for sale. The two-story home with green shingles and tall pillars is listed for $3.5 million. We've got your drive on the five with DKFI in the sky next. At Uline, they know firsthand the road to success is an uphill climb. Uline started in the family basement and through hard work is now North America's most trusted shipping and industrial supplier. They get what it means to have the support of reliable, hard-working partners. So they keep 38,000 items ready to ship. Whether your company is still in a basement office or expanding cross-country, Uline will be there on your road to success. Visit Uline.com. Hi, we're home. Meet Dr. Robert Lewis. He's a neurosurgeon at Pickup Family Neurosciences Institute who loves camping with his daughter. He is also a nationally recognized expert in minimally invasive brain tumor surgery at Hogue. Dr. Lewis loves to get to know you and is ready to make a positive difference in your family's life. Get to know Hogue. Visit HogueHealth.org and find your physician today. We're looking at your drive on the five. Well, you bet you, thanks, Ken. Good morning to you. Yes, as promised last time I ran out here, uh, there was a problem uh, reported east on Whiting around the five, and we know went, went over, I don't know, I can speak, went over to take a look at it for you, and thankfully it's over to the center divider, so it's really not a problem. Now, the eastbound 118 coming out of CB Valley is still in pretty good shape, but the reason I mentioned all this, a long plane problem, long plane. Eastbound 101 coming out of Agora Hills up and over the hill towards Valley Circle where only one lane has been open for the longest time. Now the backup is quite solid up and over the hill to Las Virginias. I want to caution you about Moreau Road over to Calabasas because that got used up very, very quickly. This is a tough one to get around. It truly is. There are long time delays. There's not too much existence, but uh, you'll spend a lot of time there. East of that, of course, things are wide open in the Studio City. Uh, quick look at the base. Another one oh, all that bad, really. 710's okay. Southbound 605. Just getting more stress slow coming down from the 60s. Don't go away. Update some of the tour coming up. Internet active is superwoman, superlawyer.com. Just far off, AFI in the sky. Living with dental issues is hard. No one knows this better than Joseph, who struggled with family teeth for years. The inflammation, the bad breath, the teeth falling out, the pain. These issues took their toll, so Joseph came to Clear Choice Dental Implant Center, where he discovered one procedure to put an end to the years of discomfort, pain, and compromise. Once I got it done, I was like, I would be wait so long. That's what dental implants did for Joseph. Find out what they can do for you by visiting clearchoice.com. San Manuel Casino is changing its name and it's changing the game. San Manuel Casino is now Yamaha Resort and Casino at San Manuel. With two new casino floors, now with over 6,500 slots, the most in the West. A new high limit room for five elevated gaming experiences, new luxury retail shops, restaurants and bars, and even more thrills to come. Experience a level of thrill that California has never seen before. San Manuel Casino is now Yamaha Resort and Casino at San Manuel. And well, details at Yamaha.com must be 21. Please gamble responsibly. Great. Subject to change without notice. Minimum loan amount requirements apply. 50% loan to value and 740 FICO credit score. Certain restrictions apply. Subject to credit approval. NMLS 3290. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California finance lender's law license. Number 6036970. Equal housing lender. Unbelievable. Home loan rates have dropped again at Intel alone. Today, Intel alone is offering a 1.875% rate in APR with no points and no lender fees. Did you hear that? A 1.875%. 
Don't think you qualify? I bet you haven't called Intel alone. You don't have to have perfect credit to get this great home loan. So lock in this unbelievably low 1.875% fixed rate and APR with no points and no lender fees. So call Intel alone before the rates go up. Call them at 1-800-918-6200. That's 1-800-918-6200. Or just go to IntelLoan.com. Intel alone. Hello, Mark. Here's what you need to know about the Pfizer COVID-19 booster. Not everyone needs one. Those who should receive a booster are 65 and over, long-term care residents, and those 50 to 64 with underlying medical conditions. Consider a booster if you're 18 to 49 with underlying medical conditions, or 18 to 64 with a high risk of COVID exposure at work. Only get a booster if it's been at least six months since you received your second dose of Pfizer. Find a booster near you at myturn.ca.gov. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Spectrum Mobile is reinventing wireless again. Get unlimited on two plus lines for $29.99 a month per line. No contracts, no added taxes or fees. Includes nationwide 5G. Save up to 60% with Spectrum Mobile. Get unlimited on two plus lines for $29.99 a month. Call 855-438-2999 or visit a store near you. Offer valid for new customers on two plus unlimited lines. Spectrum Internet required. Savings based on two lines comparison of unlimited plans from major national carriers as of 92021. Prepaid exclusive restrictions apply. There's no shortage of ways. Normally, Honda Superstore works to get you a super new Honda. Whether you shop in our showroom, complete your deal online, or custom order, you'll always get super prices, super selections, and a super experience. And regardless of where you lease your Honda, return it to one of our five Honda Lease Return Super Center locations for a super upgrade experience. Plus, every new Norm Reed Honda is backed by our exclusive price protection guarantee, which states if you can find the same new Honda for less within five days, Norm Reed will pay you the difference or buy your vehicle back. Visit our super award-winning Norm Reed Honda Superstore location in Huntington Beach, West Covina, the Irvine Auto Center, and the number one Honda store in the world in the Cerritos Auto Square. Plus, we're now open in Vista. Shop online at normreads.com. What is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Yes. You've worked with Bill Handel for 15 years. Well, I don't know what this is. And you expect... Well, who else leaves a Band-Aid? What, that Band-Aid has been through something. Gary and Shannon. No. Weekdays at 10 a.m. on KFI. Show. Uh, Bill's out today. Wayne Resnick sitting in, and in a moment we're going to talk to Jason Nathanson about the accident on the set of an Alec Baldwin movie that left one woman dead and the director injured. But first, here's a chance for you to win a thousand dollars. KFI has your chance to win one thousand dollars. Text the nationwide keyword Bill B I L L S to two hundred two hundred. You'll get a confirmation text and info. Standard data and message rates apply in this nationwide contest. That's Bill to two hundred two hundred. If you win, you get a call from a number you don't know. You've got to pick it up every weekday from five twenty a.m. to seven twenty p.m. There's a chance to win a thousand dollars. What does that mean? That means if you don't win this hour. There's another chance next hour. All right, let's bring him on. ABC News Entertainment Correspondent Jason Nathanson. Good morning. Hey, good morning. What a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Oh, thank you. You too. All right, so tell us what happened on the set of this movie outside of San Francisco. The movie called Rough. Alec Baldwin is one of the stars. He's also a producer. They were filming. They've been filming for a couple of weeks now uh, at this ranch in New Mexico um, outside Santa Fe. And... Yesterday, they were filming a scene, not exactly sure what was going on in the scene or what was necessarily uh, the, the action was. But Al Baldwin is holding a gun. Uh, it is a gun that's uh, in theory loaded with blanks, and it goes off. Whether he shoots it and pointing it at somebody or exactly how what happened, we still don't know yet. That's under investigation. Uh, but the cinematographer was shot and killed. Uh, the director on the on the uh, movie, Joe Souza, was also injured. He was sent to the hospital. He's out of the hospital as of this morning. But Helena Hutchins, who's 42 years old, who is the, the cinematographer on the movie, she died. She was taken to the hospital, and uh, she died from her injury. Now, 
exactly what happened, whether they were, whether this was rehearsals. Um, you know, obviously there are some questions as to why the cinematographer, why, because if you're in a scene, in theory, the actor would be pointing the gun at another actor if you're shooting a scene. Unless they were shooting a scene where Al Baldwin is looking right at the camera, which would seem to me that that would be the case here, because if he's looking right at the camera, then he would be pointing the gun at the director of photography and the director who would be that's who probably behind them. Um, or this was in rehearsal when they were re rehearsing things and, and the gun went off. We're, we're not exactly sure yet. Yeah, and I'm sure that the uh, sheriff's office there is going to put everybody in a room by themselves and try to reconstruct how this came to be. Uh, I know that this is not unheard of. This is not yeah. the first time this has happened, but is it something that happens regularly or is it still pretty rare? It's very rare. Um, as far as we know, uh, and you know, I've been looking into this this morning, um, and just know from, from covering things like this and, and living through it, of course, Brandon Lee being the most uh, well-known incident of something like this in 1993 on The Crow, which is where he was in a scene where, he, where somebody was pointing a, a gun at him loaded with blanks. They shot it while they were filming the scene, and there was some shrapnel left over from a previous round, a blank round that was fired. It wasn't cleared properly as it was supposed to be. And that shrapnel then comes out, because a, a blank is, is, is gunpowder, it just doesn't have the actual bullet part that, that comes out. Uh, so when there was shrapnel in there, that comes out effectively as a bullet, and then it, and that's what shot him and, and killed him. John Eric Hexham uh, on the set of a TV show called The Cover-Up in 1984. He was playing with a gun that was loaded with blanks. He put it to his head to simulate Russian roulette, and he shot himself. What happened there was uh, that it wasn't something that necessarily came out of the gun, but it was so close to his head, it fractured his skull, and he died from injuries there. So those are the two that we know of, and, you know, in, in and now this, this is a third in 40 or so years when we've had millions of blank rounds fired on set in, in between all that. So this is a very rare thing to happen, but we're seeing a lot of calls today and, and yesterday and even on social media and from people who work in the business saying, why do we even need to do this anymore? Uh, you can put the, if you need a muzzle flash, which is what a lot of these guns are used for, because it's not the sound, right? They put the sound in after in post. Um, so it's not the sound they're necessarily trying to capture, but they do like have the look and the, the feel, the action of it when it's fired by the actor, and the muzzle flash. Um, the muzzle flash they can put in, in in post, and so a lot of people are saying, why don't, why are we even using something that could possibly hurt somebody? And I know there was some discussion about, well, it's not just the muzzle flash, it's also the recoil. Yeah. Like some kind of mess. But you know what's funny to me is when I watch movies and people are doing a lot of gunplay, and, and if the industry is saying, well, one of the things we want to do is make sure that there's a natural, a realistic recoil. So when I watch movies a lot of times, I'm always going like, how come these guns are not, how come they're not experiencing any recoil from all these guns that they're firing over and over? So uh, I think my point is this. This is a weird way of getting to my point, which is Brandon Lee, human error. Fail failure, basically, of a safety protocol. John Eric Hexham, kind of the same thing because he should not have been allowed to even have that gun with blanks in his hand if it right. wasn't immediately necessary to film a scene. And this yeah. now we just don't know. It, it, exactly. And so they're going to look. One of the, the key people they'll be talking to is the prop master. The prop master is the person responsible for the guns on set, mm -hmm. for the loading, the cleaning, the checking to make sure that there's no shrapnel in there the instructing of the actors on how to use them properly, all that kind of thing. So Alex Baldwin, of course, very, the investigators talked to him yesterday, were told that they did the interview that they needed to do and the will probably follow-ups as well. Uh, but the plot master would be also uh, probably the most important person to talk to to find out, you know, if, if they knew anything, if they saw anything. Of course, if they're doing their job properly, there shouldn't be any issue there. So. Yeah. Um, all right, so I mean, obviously more details will come out. Now listen, uh, 20 seconds, is there a must, must watch thing this weekend you recommend? Uh, uh, I would say Curb Your Enthusiasm returning and the, the, the final season of, of Insecure, both of those on HBO, two very different comedies that I love uh, for very different reasons. 
that is what I'm looking forward to this weekend. Uh, the big one, though, I know a lot of other people are looking forward to is Dune, uh, which you can watch on HBO Max. But if you're going to watch it, don't watch it on HBO Max. Sounds good. Jason, thank you so much. All right, take it. All right, there he goes, Jason Nathanson. Uh, let's get a news update from Jennifer Jones Lee. And then uh, when we come back, In and Out was uh, out of business for a brief period of time. But they're back in. And it has to do with vaccines. I'll explain what happened. It's KFI AM 640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. The California Attorney General's office says it's filed a 56 count felony complaint against three people for embezzling money and resources from a nonprofit in LA that helps the homeless. The complaint alleges from January to September of 2017, the trio would forge documents to make their friends, family, and associates appear to be eligible for services with people assisting the homeless, also known as PATH. Investigators say the three stole hundreds of thousands of dollars. Tiny home villages are becoming more common in L.A. as the city fights the homeless crisis. <laughs> Officials have held a ribbon-cutting ceremony at a new tiny home village in Highland Park. Councilman Kevin De Leon says another one is on the way. In a few short weeks, we're, we'll be, we'll be opening another tiny home village in Eagle Rock. Officials say the development celebrated yesterday as the eighth of its kind in the city and the largest in the United States. When people start moving in on November 2nd, they will have amenities including free meals and laundry facilities. The village will provide over 200 beds in Highland Park, Lake Trolley, KFI News. News is brought to you by a veteran-owned Semper Solaris. Police in Santa Monica are looking for a person accused of setting a sleeping homeless man on fire. Officials say the man was sleeping in the park near Venice about 11.30 Saturday night when a liquid was poured on him and he was set on fire. The man's being treated for burns to about half his body. At least 16 people have been killed in an explosion at a gunpowder factory in Russia. Officials say something went wrong when the production process that caused it. The explosion happened in a region about 165 miles southeast of Moscow. And people in the Australian city of Melbourne are finally able to get back to some sort of normalcy. As city officials have lifted their COVID-19 lockdown, people cheered as the clock struck midnight and the city's long lockdown ended. Melbourne has been in lockdown more than anywhere else in the world. People there have been under COVID restrictions for 262 days. Jeff Vaughn, you've got more on the 101, but boy, do you have a beautiful sunrise this morning. <laughs> yeah, it is a beautiful sunrise, but not so beautiful on the East 101. Now, we're going to tell you about the East 101 now, Aurora Hills into the San Fernando Valley. Be just start now to whoever is waiting for you, call them because you're going to be late. Uh, eastbound at Valley Circle, Mulholland, only one lane is open. It was all lane shut down uh, for quite some time. The backup is up and over the hill to our Virginia. That doesn't sound like a lot of distance, but you'll spend a lot of time. It's time that you'll sit here. The alternative, the eastbound 118, well, that's good up to the 405, but then the 405 going south, the 170, the 5, they're all jammed as well. So this is really a tough one. Alabasta's Road got used up uh, earlier with signals that can't make it worse. You can get on if you can get there and get on these one one at Valley Circle or Topanga and you're on the way. Back to, uh, to the uh, L.A. Basin, uh, westbound San Bernardino, freeway around Santa Anita. There's a report of a crash coming up. And also, southbound 710 Alonzo, just before 91. The crash there going on in the off ramp. Be careful approaching. Injured in an accident in Superwoman, superlawyer.com. Jeff Fox, AFI in the sky. Are you looking for a Medicare Advantage plan that lets you access out-of-network specialists without a referral? With the United Healthcare Medicare Advantage HMO POS plan, you get more of the extras you need with great benefits, like up to $200 yearly to buy over-the-counter products, routine eye exam, and $300 allowance towards eyewear, co-pays as low as $375 for hearing aids, and much more. With a $0 premium Medicare Advantage plan from United Healthcare, you'll get more care for your Medicare Advantage. Take advantage. Call United Healthcare today at 1 877 215 6533. TTY 711. And trust America's number one health provider to help you find the right plan for you. Call United Healthcare at 1 877 215 6533. TTY 711. That's 1 877 215 6533. TTY 711. Benefits, features, or devices vary by plan and area. Limitations and exclusions apply. 
SoCal weather from KFI, partly cloudy today. Highs will just be in the mid-60s to right at 70 for the beaches, Metro LA, and OC, and just the mid to upper 70s for the valleys and the Inland Empire. We lead local. Live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom, I'm Jennifer Jones-Lee. Homeowners, with all the craziness in the world right now, want some good news? Mortgage rates continue to drop and are at near all-time lows. If your interest rate is higher than 1.75%, you need to call True Mortgage now. We're offering a 15-year fix at just 1.75% rate. 2.140% APR with no lender fees. That's right. No title fees, no escrow fees, and no appraisal fees. So what are you waiting for? Call True Mortgage now to see how much money you can save. But hurry, because this low 15-year fix at just 1.75% rate, 2.140% APR with no lender fees won't last long. Call 800-620-1162. 800-620-1162. That's 800-620-1162. Or visit truenow.com. Sign up a lightning TV and true mortgages and equal housing lender. Terms of conditions apply. Based on loan amount of $400,000 monthly principal and interest payments. Primary residence only with a 50% loan value. All loans subject to underwriting approval and not all applicants will qualify. Loans made are arranged pursuant to a California finance law license number 60 BBO 44713. NMLS number 1626699. Well, you've heard me talk about my friends at Sunday and how they can sell your home fast with Without any repairs, without the hassle of dealing with showings, realtors, cleaning, or making upgrades. Now Sunday has made the process even easier for those who want to sell a property fast. Contact Sunday for your free no obligation cash offer. They're going to visit your property, take photos, and do a 3D walkthrough. They'll package your property details and send it to the thousands of local investors in their database who are actively looking to buy property. The average homeowner receives 12 offers on their property. It's quick and easy. Plus, you can close in as little as 10 days or they have the flexibility to close in months. They can even give you a $20,000 cash advance, which will help with moving costs when you sell a Sunday. Go to Sunday.com, S-U-N-D-A-E.com, or phone them, 825 offer. Get a free no-obligation cash offer at Sunday.com, S-U-N-D-A-E.com. Sunday is a California licensed real estate broker. DRE license number 020-88298. KFI congratulates Kawala Sharp and Mo Kelly for their well-deserved recognition at the LA Press Club Southern California Journalism Awards. Picking up not one, but two knocks for best personality interviews and radio journalist of the year. You deserve a college just really warms my heart. Time to expand the film case. KFI AM for more stimulating talk. KFI AM640 live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. It's the Bill Handel Show. He's out today. Uh, Jennifer Jones Lee, please join me. Friday. We have some awesome. breaking news, and I'm scratching my head. Robert Dirk, who is currently A, sentenced to life in prison without parole. B, he is old as can be. C, he was in terrible, terrible uh, health conditions before he was sentenced. And he is on a ventilator with COVID. That Robert Dirk. He has just had a complaint filed against him for the murder of his wife from 1982. From 1982. And it turns out, and this was kept very quiet until the complaint for second-degree murder was filed um, a little bit earlier this week. There's a grand jury going on in Westchester County about this 1982 situation. Um, we, yeah, you're right. We knew nothing about that grand jury. And I think what's, what's fascinating about this one in particular is there has been so much about Robert Durst killing his neighbor in Texas, chopping up the body, and then not being found guilty on that. He's on trial in L.A. And in the meantime, in the background, you've had Kathy Durst missing since 1982. She wasn't even declared legally dead until 2017. And they just didn't seem to have the evidence to go after him in this case. And Robert Durst, of course, said that she just disappeared. 
And we all know, though, that they had been having marital problems up to that point. There were plenty of friends who had gone to the cops and said, hey, she disappeared, but we know who did it. We know it's this guy because we've seen them fight before. And they just never seemed to be that uh, smoking gun, the wrong thing, because we have no idea what it was, but smoking gun against Robert Durst to nail him down on Kathy Durst's murder, if that in fact is what it was, until now, possibly. And what new evidence do they have? I, according to, I've looked at three different reports now, and they're not saying So, but I'm trying to find the complaint somewhere, because I want to see what their theory of how they would prove now uh, that he murdered her. Literally, the only thing that I have read over and over and over is the Westchester County DA's office can confirm a complaint charging Robert Durst with the murder of Kathleen Durst was filed in Lewisboro Town Court October 19th, 2021. We have no further comment at this time. Yeah, it's all very odd. Now, that's because I think what they've done is they filed a complaint which really a uh, police officer files, right? And then, okay, they did it again. And then you go to the grand jury to get an indictment. But once the police officer files a complaint, then you can't keep it secret anymore. Right. So I understand sort of procedurally what's going on here. They could have just convened the grand jury and went for an indictment. They didn't necessarily have to have the officer file the complaint. I guess my point is this. My reaction to this is kind of negative. And why? Because it feels to me like a public relations stunt where after all this time when they could not apparently pursue charges, because you think if they could have, they would have, now... They're filing this complaint and convening this grand jury after this guy's already sentenced to life and is almost certainly going to die before they could possibly bring this case to trial. Here's my question, though. Could it be that they had to wait until Robert Durst was convicted here in L.A. with uh, the murder of um, Susan Berman? who they claimed knew something about Kathy Durst's disappearance. Were they having to sort of walk it back in order? Well, I, you know, this is this is an understandable belief that, that what's happened that's different now is that he was convicted of the murder here of Susan Berman, and the theory of that case was that he killed Susan Berman because she was going to reveal, or he was afraid she would reveal, that he had killed his wife. And right. so you would say to a jury, we have no physical evidence, we don't have a body, but what we have now is a jury over here found that he killed his friend, and he must have killed his friend because she knew he had killed his wife, so you should convict him beyond a reasonable doubt of murdering his wife. That's like a weird backwards way. If somebody's accused of a crime, and, and the police, let's say, they tried to arrest them, and they ran away from the police. Now, you could certainly bring up to the jury, you know, when the police came up to him, he ran away. So, we, we, we think that shows that he knew that he had done something wrong. But you still have to prove the crime. Whatever the crime was that he's accused of, that's not enough to prove it. Like, no judge is going to allow him to be convicted of murdering his wife, and the and the argument is only, well, he murdered Susan Berman so she wouldn't tell anybody that he killed his wife. That's never going to fly. They're still going to have to actually directly prove what happened to Katie Gerst. Okay, so did Robert Gerst in some way perjure himself in the Kathy Gerst case on the stand during the Berman trial? Because if you remember, during that trial, he testified... He didn't kill Berman or his wife, but then he said on top of examination, he would lie if he had. So did that, even just that tiny little revelation, give prosecutors then in New York enough to go, look, he's lying about it, so now here's our opportunity to reopen the case. Since they still have to lay out for a jury, here's what happened. Back in 1982. They're going to have 
they're going to have to explain why, beyond a reasonable doubt, she's dead. And then they're going to have to explain, beyond a reasonable doubt, how she died. And then they're going to have to explain why he's the one who did it. I just felt the timing is so bizarre to me. And maybe it's because they've been so hush-hush. And because even now that it's public, they will make no comment. And maybe they're sitting on some kind of bombshell of direct, credible evidence that he murdered her back in 1982. And if they are, A, how come it took so long? But B, they're not talking. So, I mean, I guess this is one of those situations where right now I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm just going to have to be patient. We're all going to have to be patient and wait and see what develops. Man, I'm looking at a picture of him from, uh, I don't know the date that this photo was taken, but it looks like it's during his trial here in L.A. And my goodness, they're not, they're not bringing this guy to trial for murder. He's not going to, he will not be around. Just the, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. He will not, he will he will around, not be it. around for a trial. Maybe they think now, uh, given that he's already sentenced to life over here, maybe they can get him to just admit it. Hey, just go ahead. Look, we're going to file this thing. Just go ahead and please. We'll agree, you know, no additional time, because I can tap on time to life without parole. And and they think maybe he'll just, at this point, he's going to give up, and he'll just admit it, and they can close it out. It's like housekeeping. That's what it is. All right, let's, uh, hey, Jen, would you give us a news update? Sure. Okay. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, China is trying to spread a new rumor about where COVID came from, and you'll be surprised where they say it came from. It's KFI AM 640, live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Garden Grove is awarded an $800,000 settlement to a woman wrongfully arrested for DUI a decade ago. The woman was arrested by police in Garden Grove on suspicion of driving drunk, but she was actually having a stroke. LAUSD has launched its search for a new superintendent. Yesterday, the district released its qualifications, which include experience as a teacher or administrator, someone who's worked in diverse communities, and someone with a...